Hey everybody and welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a camera following ring light. Before I get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed. If you haven't yet done it, feel free to jump down there, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification icon so you always stay updated when I upload new content. Also, a massive thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. Links to Patreon are in the description below if you want to support the channel. So let's jump right into this then. So a ring light is a light that photographers use for a varying number of purposes. Sometimes it's used for macro work, um, close-ups generally speaking, and it's a very beautifying light because it kind of removes a lot of the imperfections on the subject's surfaces like their skin or if it's a a piece of clothing or a shoe, it can iron those out because light is coming omnidirectionally towards the point of focus. We will see what that means <laughs> momentarily. So the first thing that we have to do is create some primitives. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this button at the top here that looks like three shapes smushed together and we're going to create a torus. This is a new one for anyone who's been following and we're going to set the major diameter to 50 and the minor diameter to 10, making sure that it's centimeters and centimeters and not meters or anything else. Segments and sides is fine, we're just going to hit accept. So there's our first shape. What we're going to do now is we're going to jump into wire texture shaded mode by clicking on the ball next to the perspective view and we're just going to click on that. And as you can see our wireframe has now appeared. Next thing we're going to do is click on this icon at the top here next to the render settings and it says click here to activate geometry editor tool which is the one we're after. And what we're going to do is we're going to select our torus and then we're going to select the surfaces. We're going to hold down the mouse and we're going to drag and as you can see the surfaces are highlighted in yellow when we select them. And what we're going to do is we're going to select all of the faces in the top half like so. Don't worry if you select one that you don't need, you can always press the Alt key and that will uh, deselect it. So select all of the faces that you want to select from this view, like this. And then we're going to rotate our camera around and then we're going to hold down the control key to make sure that we continue with our selection. And then we're going to select the rest of the faces on the top half of this shape and you can move the camera around as much as you need to to make sure that you have selected the correct faces you don't want any of the bottom half you just want the faces on the top half like so and you can whiz around and make sure that those are the only faces you've got selected and when you have achieved that you're going to right click on the torus and then in the menu that pops up you're going to go to geometry editing delete selected polygons and then it's going to come up saying you're about to delete 144 polygons or however many it is just say yes and there you go so we've now got half of a torus so you're thinking to yourself right great yeah what's the point in that so <laughs> here we go we're going to create another torus this time we're going to change the measurements so we're going to say i want it to be 47 centimeters and three so it's going to be a much thinner in fact, no, do you know what? I'm going to say it's going to be 50 centimeters instead. I'm just going to say three there like that. And then when we hit accept, you can see it's not perfect. We're going to have to change the scale of it slightly, but we can achieve that. No problem. So we're just going to scale that up so that it sits inside the other torus nicely. And then we're going to raise it up ever so slightly by literally about 0.75 of a centimeter so that it's just raised out on so it's not sticking out the back of the previous one beautiful in fact i'm quite happy to raise that up a little bit more so let's just say 1.25 there we go and then we want to make sure it's dead center so i'm going to scale it up a fraction more just so that it's smack bang in the middle like so check that it's not poking out the bottom and then we're good. 
So now what we're going to do is we're going to rename these. So the top one, we're going to rename as the reflector. Like that. And then we're going to parent that into the previous one by dragging it on top of it. And then we're going to rename this one and we're going to call this one the lamp like that. So first we're going to select our reflector. We're going to go into our surfaces tab and we're going to expand the reflector surface. And we're just going to check that it is base color white. And we're going to check that the glossy laid weight is 0.3 to 0.5, somewhere in that range. And the glossy reflectivity is at 0.5. That's ideal. So now we're going to go to our lamp and we're going to do the same thing again. But this time we're going to select our emission tab and we're going to turn our emission on like that. We're going to up the luminance to about 5000 and switch that to 5000 KCDM2 like that. And that's that bit done. So now we're going to reset our camera by clicking on this upwards arrow. Now that we've got our light built, we need to get it into the right position. So what we're going to do is on the X rotate, we're going to set that to minus 90 by clicking on the number, hitting enter. Now we need to bring a camera into the scene. So we're going to click on this camera icon in the top left of the screen. And we're just going to hit accept. We're not going to worry about the parameters because we're going to do the same here. We're going to zero all of these parameters, rotation and position, like so. And then we're going to simply parent the lamp to our camera, like so. So we can minimize that down and and as if by magic, when we select our camera and move it around, the light will go with it. And if we were to switch into the camera view mode and rotate and spin it around, as you can see, the light moves with it. Fantastic. So you're now thinking, well, what use is that? Well, I'm about to demonstrate that. I, I'm going to set up a quick scene and I'll be right back. So here we are, I've got a little scene set up. I've got a character standing in front of a photographic backdrop and I have applied a depth of field to the camera so that it's focused on her face. So we're gonna jump into camera view mode and we are going to open NVIDIA iRay preview mode and see what happens. And as you can see, it gives you that very soft lighting effect. There's no ugly shadows that you normally get with an on-camera flash. This is a beauty dish kind of effect or it's a ring light effect. You can see the reflection of the ring light in her eyes. And as I say, it has a beautification kind of properties that a lot of photographers use for close up shots of models and products. I hope you found this useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Smash that like button really, really hard. Not so hard that you destroy it. Leave it there for other people to use as well. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye.